What's up everyone, I'm Michai here. I have a package for you straight out of the oven. It was written by maybe the most talented engineer that I know. His name is Mu'ayed. I think you're going to love this package and I can see it being used widely. So let's talk about what this comes to solve and why I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's imagine that we have over here some person. So let's say person and the person has a name, but also they have the significant other. <laughs> so let's say over here, person, spouse, and let's give it a getter and a setter. Then over here we have, let's say Amichai, maybe let's call it Amichai. And over here we have Lior, which is my wife. So let's say Leo. And then for me, so my spouse is Lior. And for my wife, so it's the other way around. Okay, like so. Now let's imagine that we have an object that looks like this and we want to print the details of the person to the console. So because we're using a record over here, then we have built-in formatting for display. I think that's the name of the feature where you can output the values that are contained in the record in a human readable way. So let's say over here, console that right line and let's say, I don't know, Amichai, for example. So we're running this. And like you can see, so over here, we have some recursion happening because what happens is that the record is trying to print each one of the properties that it has, but because we have a circular reference between Amichai and Lior, so it's recursively trying to print out what's happening inside. This case is by design, so this is a known issue with records. Because it's immutable, then theoretically you're not supposed to have this kind of circular reference. So over here, we would put the spouse, for example, and then we can't have this type of circular reference because you first need to create the instance of the spouse and only then you can pass it over here. So this isn't supposed to happen, but it may indeed happen because like we know in a record, we can have also other properties as well. And if it's a record, then we can have a circular depend dependency like we had over here and then it will simply go into recursion every time you call it to string and this is this gets stuck okay now if we didn't have this circular dependency so i'll just get rid of this and we go ahead and run dot net run okay now this is a great feature that i really like especially for demos so it allows me to create things as records print them out to the screen i don't need to implement some nice to string method that prints out the properties in a nice way but if you've been working with Linkpad, then I'm sure you're familiar with the dump method. So this is an extension method that you can put after any object or primitive type to print the values of that object to the screen. If you've been using Linkpad, then you definitely know what I'm talking about. And it makes it hard to leave the Linkpad because it is so, so convenient. But that was until today because from now you can use the dumpify package. So let's say .NET add package dumpify. And once we have this nuke package, then we can do the following. First of all, we can go over here, replace this Amichai simply by writing Amichai dot dump, capital D. Let's include the dumpify namespace. And now if we run this, then we can see that we have a much nicer output. So we see we have over here the type, we have the properties. So it's by lines, so we see the name is Amichai. The spouse is also a person object and inside the name is Lior, okay? Now, if we have a circular dependency again, so let's say something like this. So boom, now we can see that we have Amichai, we have here a person and a circular reference, meaning that this is referenced again from a nested object, okay? So it also detects these circular references, but also it knows how to print it out in a way that's convenient to see, okay? Now, just to show how powerful this package is. So let's imagine we have over here also, I don't know, a list of ints, let's say grades, okay? So I say grades, something like this. And then I say that my grades are like 100, 100, 100. And for my wife, I have to keep it honest. So let's say, I don't know, 15, 20, something like this. And now if we run this, then I want you to see what the output looks like. So check it out. What we have over here again is the properties by line. So we have the name, then we have the grades where you can see the grades because it's another object. So it's listed over here and we can see on the left that we have the indexes of the array and on the right, you can see the values. 
And same thing goes for my wife. Another cool thing that you can do is let's say we have over here some field. Let's say private read-only string, and I don't know, let's say nickname. And let's say by default it is the name where we basically take, I don't know, the first two characters, okay? Something like this. Now, then over here we have some public property. So let's say public string, nickname, and this simply returns the nickname, this thing. Okay, let's say we have something like this and the compiler is giving me a, here a hint that we can use auto properties. So if you're not familiar with this, then you can take the name property and simply take over here the first two characters. But I want to leave it like this on purpose to show you another feature. So by default, if we run this, then you can see we have over here the name, the grades, then we have the spouse like we had before. And we also get here the nickname, which is the first two characters. So public properties are included by default, but you can customize this so we can go over here to the dump method and define here the configuration for the members, where the members are the properties and fields that we have. So let's say over here, member config. Okay, so we have the option to say what we want to include. So if we say include fields, true, which is false by default. So if this was public, then it would be included like this, but because it is private, then we need to add here also include non-public members and let's say true for this as well and now if we run it then we should have the private read-only field included as well okay so here we have the output and we can see that we have the nickname the private field included as well and also we have here the various backing fields for the public properties that are included as well because behind the scenes in the actual object we have them as non-public members Okay, so pretty cool. It's pretty configurable what you can do over here. So here's the package on GitHub. If you liked it so far, then go ahead and smash the star button because it has only 114 stars and it should be on 1K by now, right? I mean, look at this library. It's so convenient. It's the future. It's how our children, our grandchildren are going to print things to the console, maybe. So a few cool examples from the documentation. Then we can see that over here we have an anonymous type and if we simply call dump on it over here, then it prints it to the console as well. And we have this anonymous type kind of title in the top. If we have two dimensional arrays, so just imagine if you were writing the code to output this in a nice way. So here you have it. Okay, looking at the colors, I love colors. I can configure colors for hours. So over here we have the option to create a colors config. And over here we can say that, I don't know, for the value for the values, we want the color to be royal blue, and then we'll have the output like this in blue. Then another thing that we talked about what we didn't show is how we can customize the names, the headers, the labels, etc. So if we want to get rid of the header over here, so we can do it like this, simply creating a table config saying show table headers false. And you can see it's very configurable, so you can configure more or less anything. And another important thing to say is that we can update the dump config for the entire config library. So there is basically a heuristics. So I'll go back over here and I want you to see the implementation is like this. So if you specify a configuration, then there's a heuristics where that will be used. But if you don't specify anything, then it's taken from the default where the default is just this static object that you can update and it's updated across the entire package. So if we look at this implementation, then we have here a public static dump config that internally, we can't see it over here, but internally contains the various other configs. So you can either define it globally and then you don't need to pass it in the config method, or you can pass it over here if you want it, or you, if you want a different configuration for this specific dump call. If you enjoyed this library, then I encourage you to go to GitHub, smash the star button. I'm sure it'll give Mu'ayed motivation to continue working on this really awesome library. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. Hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one.